Welcome to this podcast on the social implications in computing. This will involve a discussion about questions related to the legal and ethical issues in computing, as well as the impact on society, the environment, and the way we do things. These topics are from question 7 of the 2024 Computer Applications Technology or CAT theory exam from November. There are three ways that you can engage with the content of this podcast. If you want to test your knowledge, then download the questions first covered in the video by getting the PDF that's in the video description link. Then attempt these questions, and then once you've done that, come back and compare your questions by listening to the answers that are discussed. Or if you want to use the podcast to learn new information, then first listen to the discussion, then download the questions that we mentioned earlier, and then test yourself to see how well you remember those answers from the discussion. Or you can simply enjoy the discussion about the social implications in computing and learn more about its impact on a society. So let's hear what these podcasters have to say about these social implications. Welcome to the deep dive. This is where we take a whole stack of different sources, articles, notes, research, and we uh, basically pull out the key bits of insight for you. Mm -hmm. And today, just think about your day, right? School projects, maybe online classes, streaming shows, connecting with friends. I mean, computers and the internet, they're just everywhere. Absolutely. They're incredibly powerful tools, always changing. And yeah, let's face it, they make life a lot easier, more interesting. Totally. But, you know, with that power comes... Mm -hmm. Well, you, you need to understand things. Yeah, it's a bit like learning to drive, isn't it? You wouldn't just hop on the highway without knowing the rules or like the potential <laughs> dangers. How to keep safe. Exactly. The digital world, it's very similar. It has its own rules, its own uh, unique uh, dangers, even its own etiquette. Right, and that's what we're doing today. That's our mission. We're going on a deep dive to unpack some really essential ideas about navigating that digital world safely and uh, responsibly. We've looked at our sources on things like computer viruses, social engineering, which sounds fascinating, green computing, and even something called clickjacking. Hmm. Yeah, that's a tricky one. By the end of this, hopefully, you'll feel even more like a well-informed digital citizen. And this is really aimed at you, if you're maybe a high school student, studying computers. Because knowing this stuff isn't just theory, right? It actually empowers you to use tech confidently, securely both now and, you know, later on. It's about being ready. Okay, so let's jump in. Let's start with a term we've all heard, but maybe don't always think about the specifics. Computer virus. When you hear that, what yeah. what comes to mind? Like a slow computer, maybe? Pop-ups? Yeah, those are symptoms, but uh, the actual definition. A computer virus is essentially a piece of software, like a program or an app, that's specifically designed with malicious intent. It's unwanted, it's unexpected, okay. and it's definitely not there to help you. And these aren't just like abstract threats. They have very real, noticeable impacts on how your computer actually works. Right. Like, imagine your big school project just poof, gone. Exactly. Yeah. Or the computer just won't even start. That's the kind of real-world stuff we're talking about. Okay, so it's not just an annoyance. It actively damages things or stops you from doing stuff. But how? How do you know? How can you tell if your computer might actually be infected? Have you ever noticed like weird things happening with your own devices? Well, there are definitely clues. You sort of have to be a bit of a digital detective. Okay. So for instance, um, you might find that some of your files suddenly become corrupt. Corrupt meaning? Meaning you can't open them? Yep. Or the data is just garbled? Sometimes viruses do this to you know hold your data ransom, or they might just be designed to delete things altogether big data loss potential. Wow, that's scary, especially with important school files or photos. Absolutely, or uh, maybe you see new programs or files, folders just appearing that you know you didn't put there. Huh. You might also notice extra programs starting up automatically when you turn your computer on. Makes it boot up really slowly. Right, seen that happen. Another sign is if a file size suddenly changes for no reason, hmm. or programs or files you know sh should be there are just missing. Okay. And some viruses are really sneaky. They might change your security software settings or even turn them off completely, trying to dis disable your defenses. That's that's pretty alarming, like someone disabling the lock on your door. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> and then there are the more obvious signs, maybe. Strange messages, pop-ups, weird images, error messages just constantly appearing. It's annoying. Very. Or your computer just suddenly starts running really, really slowly, mm. slower than usual, 
even when you're not doing much. Mm -hmm. Other things. Mm -hmm. Maybe your system settings change without you doing it. Like your browser homepage suddenly goes to some weird search engine you've never seen. Right. Or new toolbars appear. Mm -hmm. Or um, your free hard drive space just shrinks drastically, even though you haven't downloaded anything big. Yeah. The virus itself might be taking up space or downloading other bad stuff. And the worst case. Worst case. Your computer just won't boot up at all. Dead in the water. Okay, that's quite the list. It really drives home how disruptive these things can be. Definitely shows why understanding this is, well, vital for anyone using a computer for pretty much anything these days. School, fun, talking to people. Hmm. Okay, so we've talked about attacks on the machine, the code, but uh, you mentioned something earlier. What if the weak link isn't the tech, but us, humans? Oh, yes. That brings us to social engineering. Social engineering sounds well, manipulative. It is. The definition is basically all the ways people try to get confidential information by uh, abusing the trusting nature of people. Abusing trust. So less about cracking code, more about tricking the person. Exactly. It's not about finding a technical flaw in the system, usually. It's about tricking someone, an individual, into giving up information like a password or clicking a bad link or running a malicious file. So the most secure system in the world could still be compromised if someone just talks their way in. Pretty much. What's really interesting here, I think, is that it's a totally different kind of threat. It plays on psychology, not just software vulnerabilities. How so? Well, think about it. A virus attacks your machine. Social engineering attacks you. It uses emotions, maybe fear, like your account will be deleted, or curiosity, click here for a free prize, mm -hmm. or even just helpfulness, can you help me test this file? Right. That makes you think, doesn't it, about those emails that seem urgent or messages that seem a bit off, asking you to click something now. Exactly. For someone your age, maybe think about uh, getting a message supposedly from a gaming company saying your account's banned unless you click this link right now and log in. Yeah, I could see people falling for that. Panic sets in. Or a text message. You've won an iPhone. Click here and enter your details. Or even a message that looks like it's from a friend. Maybe their account got hacked saying, hey, I got locked out. Can you send me your password real quick so I can get back in? Ooh, that's a tricky one. You want to help your friend. Right. It plays on that instinct. So understanding this whole concept of social engineering is a really powerful defense. It helps you spot when someone's trying to manipulate you, not just your computer. It's like developing digital street smarts. Digital street smarts. I like that. It's not just about antivirus. It's about being a bit skeptical, a bit savvy. Precisely. Healthy skepticism is key online. Okay, let's shift gears a bit. We've talked about protecting ourselves, protecting our data. What about protecting the planet? Mm. How does our computer use fit into that? You mentioned green computing. Yes, green computing. It's uh, simply about using computers and all the related tech in a way that's not harmful, or at least less harmful, to the environment. Okay. Because, you know, as users, we all contribute to the overall environmental impact of technology. So we all have a part to play in making it more sustainable. I guess we don't often think about the energy our devices use. We really don't. But did you know um, the energy used by data centers worldwide, the mm. places that store all the websites, the cloud data, it's roughly the same as the entire energy consumption of a country like Germany or Japan. Wow, seriously, that's huge. It's massive. So every little bit we do at home with our own devices, it actually contributes to reducing that enormous footprint. So it makes you think, doesn't it, about your own habits. Your phone charger left plugged in all day, your laptop running overnight. Exactly. And it's often the small things done consistently that add up. Like a really simple one. Switch off devices when you're not using them. And don't just leave them on standby. Unplug them if you can. Chargers, too, they often draw power even when not charging. Right, the vampire drain. That's the one. And if you're stepping away from your computer for a bit, Use the sleeve or hibernate function. It uses way less power than just leaving it running. Simple enough. What else? Reduce your screen brightness. You'd be surprised how much energy that saves, especially on laptops and phones. The screen is often the biggest power hog. Didn't think of that as environmental, but it makes sense. Also, use the battery saving mode on your portable devices. Hmm. It throttles things back a bit. Makes a battery last longer, meaning you charge it less often. Hmm. And when you're buying new stuff, Look for energy-saving options, mm -hmm. like um, LCD or LED screens are much better than old CRT monitors. Solid-state drives, SSDs, they use less power than traditional hard disk drives because they don't have moving parts. Right, they're faster too, win-win. Exactly. And of course, a huge part of green computing is dealing with old tech responsibly. E-waste, 
is a massive problem. Yeah. So recycle your old electronics properly. Don't just toss them in the bin. These are all really practical tips, things anyone can actually do without much hassle. Totally. It's about building small, conscious habits, and if millions of us do it. Yeah, it really adds up. It shows being a good digital citizen isn't just about security. It's also about, well, being responsible towards the environment. For sure. Okay, let's dive into one more specific kind of online trap, something called clickjacking or farming. Mm -hmm. Imagine this scenario. Your friend wants to download a song, right? They find a site, click the button that looks like the download button, mm. but suddenly they're redirected to some other, maybe malicious looking page. It's confusing, definitely not what they wanted. What's going on there? Yeah, but that sounds very much like clickjacking or possibly farming. They're related, but slightly different. How so? Well, clickjacking is basically when an attacker overlays an invisible button or link on top of a legitimate looking one. So you think you're clicking download song, but you're actually clicking their hidden install malware button, for example. Whoa, invisible buttons? That's sneaky. Very. And then farming. That can be even nastier. It involves messing with the system that translates website names into IP addresses. So even if you type the correct web address, like your bank's website, farming can redirect your browser to a fake lookalike site without you realizing. Okay, both sound pretty bad. Deceptive. This raises a big question. How do you stop that from happening? It feels like you could easily get tricked. You could. Vigilance is key. Mm -hmm. But there are concrete steps you can take. A whole checklist, really. Okay, let's hear it. What should that friend do next time? What should we do? All right, first off, only download stuff, songs, or anything else from websites you know are legitimate and reputable. If you're not sure, do a quick search, check reviews. Makes sense. Stick to the known good guys. Second, always double check the website URL in your address bar. Does it look right? Is it spelled correctly? Scammers use tiny variations to trick you, like an extra letter or .co instead of .com. Good point. Pay attention to detail. Yep. Also, look into your browser settings. Some browsers let you disable autoplaying content or require you to click to activate things like Flash or other plugins. That can stop some unexpected redirects. Okay. And sell a pop-up blocker. A good one. Many malicious links or redirects come hidden in annoying pop-ups. Definitely need one of those. And can fit a browser extensions that add security features. Some can warn you about suspicious sites or check the reputation of links. Useful. What about updates? People always say keep things updated. Absolutely crucial. Keep your web browser updated. Developers are constantly patching security holes that things like clickjacking exploit. An old browser is like an open door. Got it. Update, update, update. And here's a really handy tip. Before you click any link, especially a download link, just hover your mouse pointer over it for a second. Hover. Yeah, just let the cursor rest on it. Usually down in the corner of your browser window, the actual URL the link points to will appear. You can check if it looks legit before you click. Ah, okay. That's a great little trick. See where it's really going. Exactly. And a general rule. Yeah. Just avoid clicking random pop-ups, banners, or unexpected buttons that appear while you're trying to do something else online. Yeah. Assume they're traps. Good rule of thumb. Assume the worst of random buttons. Pretty much. Also, keep your antivirus software installed, running, and up to date. It's your safety net. It can catch malicious files or block known bad websites if other measures fail. Right, the essential backup. Before downloading, maybe check reviews or ratings for that specific file or download service if possible. See if others reported problems. And finally, look for HTTPS at the start of the web address and that little padlock icon in the address bar. That means the connection to the site is encrypted and more secure. It doesn't guarantee the site itself is trustworthy, but it's a very important layer of security, especially if you're logging in or entering info. Wow, that's a really solid list of preventative actions. It shows it's not just one thing, right? It's a combination of being careful, using the right tools, and just knowing what to look out for. Exactly. It's about layering your defenses. Mm. Common sense plus the right tech habits. So what a journey today, huh? We've covered a lot of ground from uh, computer viruses and how they actually mess with your stuff mm. to social engineering, those psychological tricks people use, then green computing, how our tech use impacts the planet. Right. And finally, digging into specific traps like clickjacking and farming and how to dodge them. Yeah, and if you sort of connect all those dots, the big picture is that being a smart, responsible computer user, it's yeah. not just about avoiding the bad stuff like viruses or scams. It's really about feeling confident using technology, understanding it well enough to harness its power, you know, positively, safely. This knowledge really does empower you to make better choices online every single day.
That's a great way to put it. Empowered, not just protected. And it leaves us with something to think about, doesn't it? As tech keeps racing forward faster and faster, how do we keep up? How do we adapt our own understanding, our habits, to stay ahead of whatever new threats pop up, but also embrace the new opportunities for being, you know, responsible digital citizens? That's the ongoing challenge, isn't it? Continuous learning. It really is. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive today. Hopefully you feel a bit more equipped to navigate the digital world. Keep exploring, keep learning. And stay safe out there. It would be awesome if you could click on the subscribe button to support the channel. Even if you're already a subscriber of the Atmos Long IT and CAT channel, you can also subscribe to Atmos Long Computer Tips. That will really help us out. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.